So a couple weeks ago, a company by the name of Aki asked if they could send me a keyboard for review. I replied excitedly for them to send one my way. Two days later, a company called First Player asked if they could send me theirs for review, and a few months ago, I purchased myself the Corsair K95, and I figured, since I have all these mechanical RGB keyboards under the same roof, I could review them side by side and see what I like and dislike about them. Let's start off with Aki. This keyboard is called the KMG4, which is not a very sexy name, but really does fit the industrial look it has going for it. The top plate is made of aluminum, with the keys and bottom plate being made of plastic. The plastic is quite tough though, and I feel this keyboard could probably take a beating. The keyboard came with a manual, which I did read, and trust me was definitely worth it, and I'll tell you why later. It came with a disc, which I presume has the drivers and software you can use to customize the keyboard. The keyboard comes with a 24 month warranty, which I appreciate, and lastly, a key puller, which is really nice, and not something my last two RGB keyboards came with. I'm actually really glad this was included. Now let's discuss the lighting. This keyboard's a bit different than most in that it comes preloaded with quite a few presets. This is why reading the manual was so beneficial, as I'm a consumer who does not have a DVD reader, meaning that CD they gave me is useless to me, and finding the software online for that keyboard is surprisingly difficult. Maybe even impossible, as when you go to their website and search for this product looking for said drivers, the only thing that comes up is the keyboard itself. But that again is not a bad thing, because if you are like me, in that you don't have a DVD reader, you still have a huge selection of lighting profiles to work with. All it takes is holding the function key and pressing any of these keys over here. Not only can you change the lighting profile you want, but by pressing function plus or minus, you can change the speed of the profile you've chosen. Some of these profiles are really slick, and others need some work, but if you've been looking for a sturdy keyboard that requires no bloating software to customize, this really is a good choice. One thing I have to mention, this keyboard comes with a built-in microphone. I haven't been able to use it to record with, and I think its only function it serves is lighting playback. Take a look. Do you remember standing on a broken field? White crippled wings beating the sky before we move on to the other keyboards, I'd like to talk preferences. There are three things that I personally look for when shopping for a mechanical keyboard, and I have yet to find any keyboard that has all three of those things I crave. Number one, I like silent. Mechanical keyboards are not known for their quiet attributes, but being that this keyboard was made with brown switches, a few O-rings should be all I need to fix the clicky issue. Don't get me wrong, I love clicky typewriter S sounds, but it gets really annoying to others really fast, and gets on my nerves a lot as well. If you also like silent, go ahead and have a listen to this and see if it's your style. The second thing I look for is lighting profiles. I always liked RGB lighting. It made me feel like my build was good no matter what was inside it. If I brought a friend over who was familiar with tech, he would say, oh hey, nice computer. If I brought over a friend who didn't know anything about tech, he too would say, whoa, hey, nice computer. I think it's a win-win scenario, and I've always been one for pretty aesthetics. When it comes to this keyboard, I'd say it passes this area with flying colors. Not only are the keys very bright, the colors are also very crisp and mostly very smooth, but the thing I need to give props to the most in this area is not forcing me to download any software and able to use the lighting profiles. If I want the more advanced profiles, then that is my choice, but from the second you plug in this keyboard you have more profiles to work with than typically comes preloaded in most RGB softwares. So kudos on that. The last thing I look for is macros. I like the ability to open programs with the touch of a button, to map keys and games for ease of use. Not a lot of keyboards come with separate dedicated macros for this. Now, this keyboard, through the function key, has a lot you can automatically do from the get-go. All of the F keys have dedicated settings like volume up and down, mute, pause, play, but other than that, you don't have any dedicated macro keys. Now, with research, I have found that you can make your own custom macros with the software included, which is great. But, and this is just me nitpicking, I like having dedicated buttons. Now for the real cons. Aki decided to go with a very industrial look, and as sturdy as it is, I don't know if this off-gray will fit a lot of people's tastes. I know a lot of people like to color coordinate, and having this keyboard at least in black could probably do it very well. When it comes to the audio playback profile, which I love by the way, the lighting shoots from the left to the right. Because the keyboard has the microphone in it though, the right side of the keyboard ends up barren most of the time. I think having that setting light from the bottom to the top would be a lot better, but this could be something you can do within the software. If so, ignore me on that one. Despite that, none of these cons are that big, and hopefully they can help you decide if this keyboard is right for you. I'll have a link to this keyboard in the description if you'd like to take a look. Let's move on to First Player's Fire Rose keyboard. This keyboard has a metal top shell with plastic keys and bottom, and is much heavier than Aki's KMG4. 
This keyboard is equipped with blue switches, meaning the keys are much louder but do not need to be pressed down as far in order to register. The keyboard did not come with a manual this time, but did come with a key puller and a switch puller, a disc probably containing the drivers, and five replacement blue switches, which is really new to me. I have never purchased a keyboard that came with extra switches. Extra keys, sure, but this was a bit of a surprise. Speaking of surprise, first player boasts that both of their Firos keyboards are waterproof. I'm not going to test that, but I can definitely appreciate that kind of thought. There's nothing more annoying than spilling a drink on your keyboard and ruining it, so if these are in fact waterproof, that's very cool. Let's get into the lighting here. This keyboard has very similar lighting functions to the A key that we just tested in that the function button handles all of your lighting. Pressing function and insert at the same time will change the built-in lighting profile, and pressing function delete will change the color of those profiles. There's also a very simplistic editing mode where you can change any key to any color you want. So long as that color is red, green, blue, purple, yellow, turquoise, white, or nothing. To be honest, the editor mode is so simplistic I can't ever see myself using it. One could say, well Barry, what about for MMO lighting or things like that? But pressing function in the numbers 1 through 5 will give you many different lighting profiles for those kinds of games. That's a plus, and I guess the editor mode is nice to have just in case, but I think it could use a bit more kick in order to be useful. I can't give it too much flack though, the lighting is quite nice and very customizable on its own. Using the function key and the arrow keys lets you decide how fast the lighting profiles are and how bright the keyboard shines. So let's go over my preferences from before. When it comes to silence, this keyboard is not where I'd be looking. I definitely like how it feels and I enjoy typing on it, but the keyboard is so clicky and I've never been very soft on my keys. I'm a bit of a masher, so this keyboard would probably be not for me. If you do enjoy the clickier keyboards, go ahead and have a listen to this and see if it's to your liking. When it comes to the lighting, the colors are bright, adjustable, and customizable. It seems a bit more restricted than other keyboards, but for the price, it's only just a step below. Macros is again the third thing that I personally look for, and this, like the Aki keyboard, has no dedicated macros for me to work with. The function key and the F keys all have pre-programmed actions, but as far as I've seen, there's no way to customize your own macros. I'm sure the software has something for you, but again, if you have no DVD reader, the software is almost non-existent online, as far as I've searched. Moving on to the cons of this keyboard, I'd have to say this seems like a keyboard for someone with smaller hands. For the Aki portion of the script, I wrote it with the Aki keyboard. With the Fire Rose portion of the script, I wrote it with the Fire Rose, and I noticed that the keys are very close together on this keyboard. I don't have very thick hands at all, but I've noticed that it's much easier hitting two buttons at the same time because of how close the keys are positioned. Now I've seen a lot of people complain about the USB cords on keyboards not being woven, and I can understand that, but I don't see this as a con. That feels more like a personal preference, especially to someone like myself, who's never throwing their keyboards around enough to worry about the cord getting ruined. In all, I don't think I have a lot of cons, but the pros are not overwhelming either. This is definitely a great budget keyboard, and I definitely recommend it for that, but if you want a bit more lighting control, you may want to look a bit further. Now before I move on, I do have to show this off as well. First Player sent their mouse map for me to review, the new Invader Bully Hunter by First Player, and after using it for a few weeks, I can say that it's quite nice, made of very sturdy material. The bottom of the mouse mat is designed with anti-slip knobs that are sort of part fabric, part rubber combo. This really keeps the mouse mat from slipping around. The top of the mouse mat is made of what they call a frictionless horizontal fabric surface. Not exactly sure what the fabric is they use, but it feels very nice, looks really cool, and my mouse has yet to have any issues on this mat. One thing you'll notice about this mat is that it's not a standard edge of the desk mat. It's a dual zone mat designed to better accommodate both your mouse and keyboard. Problem with that, at least for me, I like to have my keyboard up against my desk as I type. I also move it in different positions as I play different video games. And because of how my desk operates, this mouse mat doesn't really fit it all that well. I would suggest this for people who don't have a keyboard and mouse lip and just put their keyboard and mouse on their desk. But seriously, this is an amazing mouse mat. Almost thought it was called the Bullet Hunter when I first saw it. Both the keyboard and mouse mat will be in the description if you'd like to take a look. Let's move on to the third and final keyboard that I have for you, the Corsair K95. I bought this keyboard a few months ago when I decided I didn't like my Razer Chrome anymore. It has a metal top plate with plastic bottom and keys. The switches are MX Browns, which is good for me as I like quieter keyboards. The keyboard came with two warranty guides, a manual, and a removable arm base just in case you're an avid typer who's prone to wrist cramps. The keyboard design is cleaned up very well with 18 dedicated macro keys at the left and media keys at the top right. There are also lighting profile switches at the top left for easy switching. Speaking of lighting, the keyboard uses the Corsair Utility Engine software for pretty much all of its functionality. 
Took me about a day to figure out how it works, but after that, I had no troubles customizing my own profiles. The keyboard has a lot of lighting profile potential, which makes it a really good thing that you can simply download other people's profiles online and use them for your keyboard. When it came to the other keyboards, the board itself was what housed all the profiles, and if you like that simplicity, then software-based keyboards may be a bit too advanced for your taste, and I can totally understand that. I've put a lot of time into this program trying to get everything the way I like it, and it could have just been a touch of a button away, but I like the more advanced tweak ability. Other than lighting, you have a lot of options available through the G keys on the left. I have the first six G keys opening various programs for me. This is very useful when I'm in a video game and I decide I want to start recording. All I have to do is press the button, let the program launch, and go. When it comes to the three preferences, this keyboard is very quiet. Not so quiet that I didn't have to put O-rings under each and every key, but brown switches are generally the way to go when trying to get a silent mechanical keyboard. When it comes to the lighting, it's not always super easy to use, but I definitely like all the variation you get. Where this keyboard really shines, though, is in the macros. 18 macros is more than I will ever need, and I love that. They're not only super convenient, but there's almost no settings missing in the software in terms of using them. However, this keyboard is not perfect. There are quite a few things that really annoy me about it. Now, there are definitely more cons for this keyboard than there were for the others. The first one is that the audio visualizer only works if you have the Corsair Void headset, meaning that fun little light up while music plays profile just doesn't work with any old speakers. Same with the Void playback. This keyboard will not register your voice unless through that headset. Now, I don't like using headsets, and this feels a little restrictive. Hey there, buddy. Want to use our cool features? Buy more of our cool stuff. Even Razer's visualizer worked through any playback device, so that kind of annoys me. Secondly, there's no pass-through on this keyboard. There is on the Platinum Edition, but not on here. If you look on the back, however, you will see a BIOS switch. This means that if you ever need to get into the BIOS and something is stopping you, all you gotta do is flip that switch while your computer's rebooting, and it'll get you there. I like this, but it's definitely not as useful as a USB would be, or audio jack. This wouldn't be a big deal if there weren't two USBs that I had to plug in for the keyboard. Another thing that bothers me is if you look at the top of the board, you'll notice the whole top layer is made of metal, except this far left side here where the macros are. For some reason, those are above a plastic base that the rest of the keyboard is made up of. Not sure why they did that, and it just looks a bit out of place. The last thing that really annoys me about this keyboard is every so often, my lighting profiles will disappear. I thought it was something to do with my internet cutting out, as I had lost my profiles every time my internet went out. But every so often, I'll turn my computer on, and the profiles will just have disappeared. If you make your own profiles, I definitely recommend exporting them to a folder just in case they disappear. That way, you can just import them later, if and when this happens. This keyboard will also be in the description if you'd like to take a look for yourself. I have yet to find a keyboard that is 100% perfect for me, and I know that day has to exist. The cool thing about these reviews is that even if I hate something about these keyboards, you could very much like that. So I hope this was helpful to you. I'd like to thank Aki and First Player for sending their keyboards out for review. That was really cool of you guys, and I really enjoyed the time I had with them. Corsair, I did purchase your keyboard, but I'm getting really annoyed with my key lights deleting on me every now and then. Please fix that. I mean, how would you like it if you were trying to get to work, but you couldn't even open the door because your key switches? I rest my case.